Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the DJI Digital FPV system and specifically the new firmware update that was released on the 1st of November. And in this video I'm going to take you through what changes there have been in that update and show you some of them on the goggles as well just so you can see what was changed. I'm also going to discuss a little bit of a hint that DJI have put in this release as well because at the end of the release notes they've announced that there will be some more OSD options coming in the next firmware for this digital FPV system and we'll talk about that at the end. Okay, so to talk about this new firmware. Now I've got my cheat sheet here for it because there is quite a lot of info in this release notes. Now the new firmware version is version 01.00.01.00 and that is an update for all parts of the DJI digital FPV system. You do need to make sure that you do update all parts of this when you do this firmware and you need to do that via the assistant for PC or Mac. Once you've done that, you will have all of the new features that we're going to discuss available. Now before I do go into that I do want to mention that the question that keeps coming up is will this update lock out the FCC hack with the text file that the video that I showed and the answer to that is no. When you do connect this system up to assistant if you are using the FCC hack it will reset it back to normal but all you need to do is put that text file back on the SD card once the update is done and it will unlock lock the eight channels and the 700 milliwatts output power as well. So don't worry, they haven't locked it down. It is still available. You will just need to do it again after performing this update. Okay, so to talk through what has changed. Well, the first thing is that they've introduced a new auto focus mode. Now the original focus mode was simply on or off. However, they've now added the option to have it in auto and the system will automatically stick it into focus mode or turn it off depending on the conditions you're flying in. And this sort of gives you the best of both worlds really. When it's not needed, it isn't actually reducing that bit rate down to the center. However, when it is needed, it will turn it on for you. Now, the initial reports on this seem okay. I've seen a bit of a mixed bag. I've seen a few people say actually it's a lot better and I've seen a few people saying they don't like it so it is going to be one of those options that you need to try for yourself and you simply go into the focus mode setting and whereas before you had on and off you've now got the option of off on and auto the next change that they have added is the option for 200 and 500 milliwatts output if you're in FCC or any of the higher output areas. And they've put this under the power limit settings. Now, originally you only had the option for 25 milliwatt or 700, but they've now put these two mid output options in there as well. And this is a nice feature if you are flying with other users and you don't want to have that full 700 milliwatt output, but you were finding that 25 milliwatt wasn't enough and it is an option for you to be able to use and it also allows you to use it in race situations and things like that a lot easier as well. Now to change this setting you simply go under the power limit options and you will now see rather than having just 25 and 700 you've got 25, 200, 500 and 700 giving you the option for the maximum output. Another change I noticed around this firmware if you are in a CE area is that originally you had the ability to set it to 700 milliwatt under power limit but it didn't actually do it because it was limited to 25. However that has now gone and when you're in CE now it does only show you that 25 milliwatt output and it takes away a little bit of that confusion. The next new feature they've added with this system is the ability to save the on-screen info on the goggles. Now there were some complaints that you can't record the OSD info with the recording on the goggles side. However, DJI have introduced the same system that they do on many of their aircraft and it, whilst it doesn't put the overlay on top of the DVR footage, it includes a file with the SD card and it allows you to then overlay this data onto the recorded footage. Now if you play back your file in something like VLC with file located in the folder it will automatically put it over the top for you and it is giving you data such as battery voltage, battery cell numbers, the signal and the latency that the system is recording and putting onto that file and again it is only doing this on the goggle side it isn't doing this on the ear end. Now whilst this isn't a full overlay recording on the goggle side it does give you the option of putting that file into a video editor and 
adding it to your footage should you want to later. Alongside this they've also added a screensaver option to the goggles and rather than just have a blank screen when nothing is connected it'll now pop up an image of the DJI FPV system as well as some other images that DJI have put into the system as well and it's really just a bit of a screen protection mechanism instead of it sitting there on that dead black image. The next big change in this firmware is around the DJI HDL and it's actually been renamed to SBUS Fast. Now there is a reason for this and the basics are that DJI created it and they wanted it added into Betaflight as DJI HDL. However, there is a bit of a reluctance within the open source software to have features named after manufacturers and Betaflight decided to label it S bus fast and this was causing a bit of a confusion between the users because the goggle was showing HDL and beta flight is now showing S bus fast so DJI have now decided to drop the HDL name and they've aligned it with beta flight and it is now going to be called S bus fast it is simply a naming change and nothing else other than that it just aligns it so both the software and the goggle system is on the same side and people are not going to get confused when they're trying to set it up the next big feature change that many people were complaining about is around the AV analog input and they've now made the change that the OSD or the settings display is no longer persistent on the screen and it fades into the background when it's not being used. So this was the contrast and brightness settings, they're no longer stuck in the top, they're actually going to disappear like all of the other menus. They've also added the ability to adjust the screen size and position for the analog input as well. So they've pretty much optimized how that works overall. Now here and now you still don't have the ability to record the AV input via the SD card on the goggles, however DJI have announced that that will be coming in the next firmware update and that will be available for users once that is out. Another new feature they've added to the system is called framing lines and they've labelled this as if a DJI Osmo is attached to the aircraft the size and the position of the framing lines can be adjusted. Now basically what they've added is the ability for you to set framing lines on the screen so you can match that up with your flight camera if you're going to use a GoPro or an Osmo action so you're able to see on your FPV system what your field of view will be. Now this isn't actually attaching your camera to the system you're simply putting framing lines on the screen you need to match that up while your aircraft's on the bench and if you're using your aircraft for flying and filming with your aircraft you will have the framing lines on the screen so you know what your field of view is going to be on your final filmed SD card and not the FPV system and it's a nice option that allows people to be able just to set the framing lines in the position they want them you can simply turn them on and off, adjust the scaling, size, move them up and down and it just means that you're able to get the framing in the correct position and you know if you're using that GoPro or Osmo Action for instance your final output footage is going to look exactly how you want it to. Now the rest of the changes in the firmware are around compatibility and overall behaviour. They've uh, optimised the way it works with the SD card and it will actually display an error message now if your SD card is too slow. Now this is something a few people have been coming up against and it was causing some problems with recording both on the goggle side and the ear end specifically and you need to make sure that you are using a fast enough SD card with this system. Personally I recommend using a SanDisk U3 card something like the extreme series however if you are going to use a slow card now it will actually warn you of that rather than just give you issues and it'll come up with a message on the screen saying SD slow if you do get this and you are using a, a, a class 10 card make sure it is a U3 card and not a U1 because you do need to make sure that it is able to record fast enough for the system They've also optimised the SD card system and it will no longer automatically format the SD card accidentally in flight. It's not an issue I've had myself but I have seen it posted around. And they've also changed it to make sure that it does record on both the ear end and the goggles when you've got that setting turned on because there has been some issues where one side records and the other side doesn't or vice versa. However, they've optimised it now to make sure that that ear end specifically does start recording as well as the goggles. Finally, there are some other things on the up 
update, but they're not really that important in the sense of they're not features you're going to see. They've optimized the playback basically, so the videos you play back via the SD card and the goggles won't cause some issues. And there has been a safety change on how the ear unit interacts with beta flight when you have it connected to USB. And it means there was a block in place before that when you had the ear unit on USB, it would stop the flight controller being able to be armed. However, that was causing some problems. So they've actually disabled that now. And that is something to be aware of. We're in beta flight when you've got the flight controller connected on USB, it won't let you arm the motors. The DJI system, you could have that plugged in on USB, but you might be able to arm the motors. So that is something to be aware of. Overall, this is quite a nice update and it does solve a number of issues that people were having. But the nice part about it is it also lays the groundwork for what's coming next. And DJI have put on the bottom of this two little hints. The first was the one I mentioned earlier about having the ability to record on the analog AV input. And that will make a lot of people happy because there have been a lot of modifications out there mounting modules either into the front face of the goggles or having it on the headband. And having the ability to record analog just allows people to take that to the next level as well. But the big one that DJI have put on you is around the OSD. And I'm gonna read what they've said specifically. And that is, Coming next, optimize flight controller on-screen display information and add the ability to customize the display. Now, my thoughts and belief on this is they are going to do something similar to Fat Shark are doing with Bite Frost, and it's going to allow you to have A, more OSD information on the screen. I don't know what OSD that will be, but there will be hopefully more info, but they're also going to allow you to move it around on the screen as well, just like Fat Shark showed on their Bite Frost system. And hopefully we're going to have very similar compatibility with the DJI system as well. Now, they have said this is coming in the next firmware update. They haven't said when, and they haven't said how long we expect it to be. However, it is coming in the future. And obviously when that does land, I will do a video on that one. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this update is for all parts of the system. So you do need to make sure that you update the ear end on your quad, the goggles, and the remote controller. And as I said, with regards to the FCC, it will reset the FCC hack, but don't worry, it still works. You simply do it again afterwards and you'll get your eight channels and 700 milliwatt back. That's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully this information has been useful to you. If it has, please do subscribe to the channel. There is also a link to the whole DJI Digital FPV system in the description of this video as well. If you'd like to support the channel, please do check it out. It's only by you guys using those links am I able to keep making videos like this one and hopefully give you guys information that you find useful. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe and I will do another video again soon. Please do subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos we have available. They are also split into playlists to help you easily find the ones that are relevant to you. If you would like to support the channel, please check out the links that are in the description for each video. You will find the links for the products we've been talking about and it's only by you guys purchasing via these links that allows us to keep making videos and buy products to talk about in the future. Please also check us out and follow us on all of the social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We're beginning to build these accounts up and whilst it is early days, I would appreciate it if you would like, share and follow us on these platforms. Finally, please also check out my website, www.madrc.com. Now this is somewhere that we've been putting some of our blog posts and things like that over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in having a look, please do go check it out. That is it. Please do click that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And I will do another video again soon.